Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, our press conference this morning. My name is Ahmed Rahab, or Ahmed Rahab, and it's spelled A-H-M-E-D-R-E-H-A-B. I'm the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Chicago, known as CARE Chicago. I'm joined here by many of our community leaders, interfaith leaders, elected officials, and others to condemn the terrible and offensive and, and, and racist remarks that were made by an Illinois state senator, Sarah Feigenholtz. And I want to begin by saying that in, in 20 years of this work, the statements shared by Senator Feigenholtz stand out as among the most extreme I have seen from a public official. It is beyond shocking to see an elected official so blatantly promote hatred of Muslims and Arabs, particularly during an act of genocide. Her comments cross major red lines and act to both justify the mass murder as well as potentially incite hate crimes locally. Rhetoric like this contributed to the recent murder about a year ago of six-year-old Palestinian-American Wadi al-Fayyumi right here in Illinois. And I spoke to his father and he said to me, it is rhetoric like this that caused my son to be taken in such a manner from me. The promotion of hatred of Islam and Muslims was exactly what the culprit had done, and that's what he had been consuming when he committed his horrible crime. Her comments and sentiments call into question her ability to fairly represent Muslim and Arab constituents and families in the Illinois 6th Senate District. Worse yet is using her public access to undermine their safety. We call on her to apologize and resign from office. We call on Illinois Senate President Don Harmon to immediately relieve her of committee leadership positions. Anything less suggests the promotion, that the promotion of hatred against Muslims is accepted and rewarded by our state Senate. I want to briefly mention some of the things that were said. Um, she basically amplified and endorsed a terrible statement by somebody I would describe as a professional Islamophobe. And this person, let me read to you what he had said. If they love Islam, Westerners who praise Islam are bootleggers. If they love Islam and Muslims, why don't they move to an Islamic country and stick their heads in the dirt multiple times a day for enlightenment? The affection for Islam and Muslims is not coincidental. They prefer a masculine dominant society where women are bought and sold like cattle. And her response to that, Musab Hassan, that's the name of the guy, you are one badass truth teller. In addition to that, she shared a quote from a former official of the Israeli government that essentially stated that it is the fault of Palestinians that their children are killed, they force us to kill their children. And to state something like that, this type of gaslighting, right in the middle of an act of genocide, is particularly demonic because it justifies and eggs on said genocide. You know, I want to close by saying that we had a state senator who once said, words matter. And that state senator also said, our students deserve to grow up in a neighborhood where they feel safe, respected, and have respect for others. That state senator was Sarah Feigenholz. So I asked her to remember her own words and to recognize the double standard in her actions and to step down immediately. Trust has been removed from her as an active officer of our state. Next, and before I do call on our next speaker, I just want to acknowledge some other organizations with us this morning. We have CIOGC, Moss Foundation, Hindus for Human Rights. Uh, we have ACES and other organizations as well. But our next speaker will be Dalara Saeed from the Muslim Civic Coalition. Thank you. Good morning. Our community is deeply disappointed in Senator Feigenholz's leadership in our city and our state. We have lost complete trust and faith in her leadership of her district and our state legislator. Her pattern of posting and promoting dehumanizing posts about an entire faith and the American Muslims who follow it is at least unbecoming of a state legislator and at worst, putting her constituents in harm's way from hate crimes. The Muslim Civic Coalition is specifically disturbed by the Senator's actions. Our team has done outreach to the Senator and her team consistently and strongly over the years. 
We work with over 150 partners and allies on civic education and advocacy. Our allies stand with us unequivocally in monitoring hate and injustice, as well as unequivocally denouncing anything that, fo that foments the divisions across our communities. <clears throat> as a civic organization, we know our public officials must understand our communities to be able to better serve them. So our team briefed Senator Feigenholz on the growing Muslim communities, the demographics, the businesses, and the constituents in her district. We invited her to events to better understand us as well as ask questions, if there were any, so that she would know how to better serve us. Well, during these times of confusion and disinformation, Senator Feigenholz should have relied on us as a source, and instead, her actions may be putting our city's residents and her constituents that we talked about in danger. Senator Feigenholz's district includes mosques and is home to constituents that attend the mosque for daily prayers. And yet our prayer, a deeply spiritual act, is something the senator promoted on social media as putting their heads in the dirt. Just this week, we all condemned the shooting of a visibly Jewish man walking to the synagogue. The last thing anyone wants is for another constituent to be attacked while walking or practicing their faith. I come to this as a public school educator for over 25 years. I cannot imagine that this would have been acceptable by anybody in our district. It is not acceptable as our CPS board chair was asked to step down. And I think our expectations must be consistent for all our public officials. Senator Feigenholz said, as Ahmed said earlier, words matter. The things Senator Feigenholz has amplified online and the climate she is creating in her district is what led, as Ahmed shared, to the radicalization a year ago of the murder of six-year-old Wadea Al-Fayoumi. Wadea's neighbor stabbed him 26 times, saying, Muslims must die. Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Attorney General Raul and the commissioners of the Discrimination and Hate Crimes Commission, on which I serve as a commissioner, just this week launched a hate crimes reporting portal. The portal is to ensure that Illinois residents feel safe and they know there is a process and support as they face hate rhetoric, acts, and crimes. Illinois Help Stop Hate is that portal. We want our communities and our members of all faiths, races, ethnicities, and background to use it to ensure that Illinois is safe for all of us. The social media posts of Senator Feigenholz may actually be eligible to be reported through this portal. We know <coughs> Senate President Harmon works <coughs> diligently to create an environment and a climate in America and in our state that fosters inclusion. Illinois has one of the largest diverse populations in the nation. It has the largest Palestinian population in the nation. It has the largest per capita Muslim population in the nation. Senator Feigenholz's words and actions have a responsibility to keep all our residents safe and to make our state stronger. And instead, we are deeply disturbed that they are unacceptable and hate mongering across our communities. The Muslim Civic Coalition is here to continue to work with all our legislators to provide briefings and information and resources, but we are also here to call out injustice and hate wherever we see it from our local residents, our fellow Illinoisans, or our public officials. Thank you. Thank you, Delara. And as I call on our third speaker, I just want to reiterate that this isn't a question of sort of, uh, of one instance that we're looking at. We're looking at a track record here. Um, this Illinois State Senator has been in office 29 years as a veteran of the trade and should really know better. And when we look at the other statements, I mentioned a few that have been made over time, we're seeing here a sort of pattern. And this is one too many and one too egregious. 
I want to call now to the podium Robert Dixon, who is a constituent of the Illinois State Senator, Sarah Feigenholz. Hello, uh, Robert Dixon, last name D-I-X-O-N. Uh, I wanted to add a few remarks to this event. The posts were shared with me recently, um, and it really shocked my conscience. Um, I'm a constituent of Senator Feigenholz, and am aware of how the rhetoric currently running up to the election and over the last years that has really pitted people against each other and created a hostile environment for citizens of Chicago. Um, I've lived my life in the city, and I am here because I value being in a diverse community. All the cultural and wonderful opportunities that the city of Chicago presents. I was shocked to see an elected official creating really what I could only describe as hate speech and endorsing hate speech and fueling the fires that create extreme difficulties for people, for citizens. I spent my life working in education and know firsthand that people who are um, visible in terms of their faith by their clothing or other uh, activities are, can be harassed uh, brutally. And these kinds of statements fuel that hostility. And I just came to express my sort of outrage as a constituent that something like this would be fomented by a public official. I appreciate the work of those behind me who are in this uh, on a daily basis trying to uh, fight for equality and justice. Um, and just as a, a citizen, I just wanted to express my uh, disappointment and shock that um, this behavior could be ongoing by a public official. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Next, we're going to hear from Marty Levine, who's with the Jewish Voices for Peace Chicago. I do unto others. Um, that's a text from our tradition, from the ethics of our parents. Um, and that's my message this morning. Uh, I bring these words to you as a representative of Jewish Voice for Peace Chicago. Proud to be standing here with my comrades at a moment when what is hateful is used as an excuse to look away even as an excuse for slaughter and genocide. I bring these words as someone whose mother fled from Russia to escape the violence and hatred that words like these bring on. I bring these words as someone who has spent a career. Um, I was the general director of Jewish Community Center of Chicago, trying to build a Jewish community for whom its teachings, its words, led the way we lived our lives. Our motto is bring Jewish values to life. And so what is hateful to you, do not do unto others. The words that um, the senator posted represent anything but that tradition. They were hateful. They were the kinds of things that we are all um, being taught to abhor and to tamp down. I bring these words um, to you because I and my JVP, Chevra, understand that what is hateful to one community is hateful to the Jewish community. We understand that at a time when anti-Semitism has been a weapon used against protesters, that words do matter, and that this is a time when we need to hold all of us accountable and hold our elected officials to even a higher standard. Standing together, we can defeat hate. We can build this community that is safe, that we all can live our lives, we can fulfill our potentials, and we can practice what our religion teaches. Senator Feigenholz's words and actions were not, that, were not words of political disagreement. They were words that are hateful. And so as I bring these words of our teaching today, what is hateful to you, do not do unto others, requires that she step away, to take a period of time out of public service, um, to make good on repairing the real harm she has done. And, and she cannot be a leader, she cannot take a position um, that tries to lead this state, because what those words are, were hateful. Thank you, Marty, and we reiterate the sentiment that a leader of, in the state of Illinois is a leader for everyone and not just someone or some of, of the communities. 
Um, I'd like now to bring to the podium Dr. Scott Alexander with the Catholic Theological Union. As Ahmad said, my name is Scott Alexander, a Scott traditional spelling with two T's and Alexander traditional spelling. I'm the director of the Doctor of Ministry program at Catholic Theological Union here in Chicago. Uh, I'm trained as a historian of religions. Um, I've been studying religious traditions for nearly 40 years, and I know of no faith tradition, the authentic expressions of which condone hate speech. I also know that our state, our cities, our communities are blessed with many leaders with deep faith convictions. We have many great faith leaders. We have many great civic leaders. There are many great state legislators, um, executives like Governor Pritzker. And I know that all of these people value the teachings of our great faith traditions, even if they might not affiliate with those traditions themselves. So I, I anticipate that many more people, people of faith, will stand up and call for Senator Feigenholz's uh, resignation. Today, in my tradition, the Catholic tradition is the Feast of All Saints. And when I leave this press conference, I'm going to be going to church. One of the reasons I'm here is that I don't think I could go to church without first doing my duty, my duty to my fellow citizens, my duty to the Muslim community I love, my duty to the Jewish community, the Christian community, and all um, uh, human beings, actually, unless I put my money where my mouth is and stood up for what's right. I don't think any of us would tolerate this kind of hate speech if it were about Christians. I don't think any of us would tolerate this kind of hate speech if it were about Jews. We should not tolerate it because it is about Muslims. One last word, our faith traditions also teach about the importance of forgiveness. Uh, from my perspective, Senator Feigenholz is a beloved child of God, but she did a very bad thing. And in doing so, she betrayed her oath of office. She betrayed the people that she is sworn to lead. She betrayed her own words, as, as Ahmed said earlier, that words matter. And so, for forgiveness, one has to repent. And one necessary step here towards repentance and healing would be for Senator Feigenholz to resign. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Scott Alexander. I'd like now to invite to the podium Illinois State Rep. Lillian Jimenez. Hello, Lillian, L-I-L-I-A-N, Jimenez, J-I-M-E-N-E-Z. Uh, so I represent the 4th District, which is a, a very diverse district. Uh, my personal background is of Mexican and Puerto Rican descent. Um, and I am here today because I think it's very important to stand against hateful rhetoric wherever it comes from. My community recently, earlier this week, experienced being in the spotlight because of hateful rhetoric from the national stage, right, from one of the presidential candidates. Uh, and we're not gonna get into that, obviously, but it is just to set the stage of why I'm here, right? I don't think the Puerto Rican people should be denigrated. I don't think immigrants should be denigrated when people speak on broad terms that mass deportation, um, those things hurt my community. They don't just hurt us because they're words, they hurt us because words spur actions. And so today we are here again because the words that were spoken. And I am here to say that whether it is bigotry and hate, whether it's Islamophobia, whether it's anti-Semitism, it has no place. It has no place in the mouths of our elected officials. I would like to believe that our elected officials, that we hold them to a higher standard, and I hold myself to a higher standard. Uh, and I'm here to affirm our shared community, our commitment to building in Illinois where all neighbors can live as their full authentic selves, where we appreciate our multiracial, multi-faith community, and we recognize that it only makes us stronger. 
Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Uh, before I conclude, I want to bring our last speaker up to the podium, Illinois State Rep. Abdel Nasser Rashid. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abdel Nasser Rashid, spelled A B D E L N A S S E R. That's my first name, last name Rashid, R A S H I D. I'm the state representative of the 21st district. It truly saddens me to be here today. Public officials are held to a higher standard because our words do matter. I was glad to hear yesterday that the board chair of Chicago Public Schools resigned after his anti-Semitic and misogynistic views came to light. We condemn hate and violence like the horrific shooting of an Orthodox Jewish man earlier this week, and we just marked the one year anniversary of the brutal murder of six year old Palestinian boy, Wadir Fayumi in Plainfield. Yet, amid all this, State Senator Sarah Feigenholz, who has been in the legislature for nearly 30 years and holds powerful leadership roles, chose to publicly and unabashedly demonize all Muslims. This is the textbook definition of bigotry. If you replace Islam and Muslims in the post that she commented on with Judaism and Jews, we would be rightfully calling out such horrific anti-Semitism and making it clear that a person holding these views is not fit for public office. Her statements not only undermine the values of inclusivity and respect that Illinois stands for, but they also put Muslims in Illinois in danger, including those in her own district. The gravity of the hatred on display by Senator Feigenholz requires swift action and accountability. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Rashid. So, uh, to conclude, I just want to really put this in very clear context. You know, the genocide that's unfolding right now, the mass murder of tens of thousands of people, could not be possible without the dehumanization of said people. To suggest that they're not humans like us, that they don't love their children the way normal human beings do, that they don't pray for spiritual sustenance, but rather to dirty their faces in the mud, that they are not fit of love, they're not fit of life. These comments are not just innocuous, insensitive comments, and we're not thin-skinned leaders in, in, in communities. These are, are deadly comments. These are comments that have the potential to, for us to lose innocent lives. They're a threat and a danger to Illinois, to the nation, and to the world. And these are her views, these are not my views, these are not these wonderful people's views. These are not the constituent views. These are the views of this one person, and she must take responsibility for the views that she mouthed herself and stepped down, because truly, such views render you unfit for public office. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Um, sure, yeah. Um, um, Senator Feigenholz responded or defended her comments <coughs> yesterday in a statement she wrote. Quote, a comment I made earlier this week on an individual social media account was in response to his address before the European Union Parliament where he spoke against Hamas and the mission that did not subscribe to or support any inflammatory remarks made on the post where my comments appear. Can you please respond to that? Um, that's a bold faced lie. Yeah. That is, um, you can just look at the actual screenshot that she erased to hide the evidence. As I said earlier, this person said, Westerners who praise Islam, not Hamas, are bootlickers. If they love Islam and Muslims, not Hamas, why don't they move to an Islamic country, not to Hamas, and stick their heads in the dirt multiple times a day for enlightenment? Their affection for Islam and Muslims, not Hamas, is not coincidental. They prefer a masculine dominant society where women, Muslim women, not Hamas women, are bought and sold like cattle. Her response, Musab Hassan, you are one badass truth teller. <laughs> So in addition to being hateful and hate-mongering, now there's the third cardinal sin of insulting our intelligence, which I take just as seriously as the other two. Um, yes? Hi, I'm Olivia with the Chicago Tribune. Mm -hmm. um, she also this morning uh, apologized. She released an updated statement and was like, I, I apologize, this was a mistake. The sort of a similar justification that she didn't need to comment on that post, I guess, was implied. Um, from where I'm sitting, quite honestly, it's, it's sorry I got caught. I mean, this, this sat there festering for five days until there was movement online. 
and then she uh, deleted it. Um, again, it's not divorced from pattern of, of bad comments that have been made in the past that show bad faith. Um, we're not a community, we're not an organization that jumps the gun and tries to just, you know, looks for retribution. Uh, we do look for redemption, but when the intent is clear and when the track record is clear, again, our intelligence shall not be insulted. And I think the only way forward, if she's truly sorry, as a matter of fact, is to step down as a statement of her being sorry and to work on whatever issues she might have because she has lost confidence as far as constituents and as far as communities are concerned. Um, and just kind of on that issue of, of whether it's a pattern, um, I, I saw one other post that sort of that just put in a press release about this. Um, were there other things that you were referring to? Maybe? Yes, uh, th there are several other things. I'll mention another. Um, so you're also aware of the one about the children. Is that the one that you're referring yes. to? In addition to that, on the very floor of the state senate, she referred to Americans who were protesting genocide as violent monsters among us. And she was referring to a particular rally locally here in Illinois that happened, ironically, to be the victim of violence against it by a culprit who was arrested and charged. And so again, this sense of, should you dare speak against my political ideology, I will demonize you and tar and feather you and put a target on your back, is a pattern. And these comments are very much intended and very much uh, purposed for that purpose. Yes. Do we have any other uh, questions, comments? Anybody else wants to add anything? All right, this concludes our press conference. Thank you very much.